Hare Krishna, everyone. Hare Krishna, everyone. Where, are, where are we? Shakespeare's Globe, world famous. It's a theater. It's not just a globe, but it's the Globe Theater. Yeah, well, that's what it means. I mean, British people understand what the globe means. Well, we're going out to the entire world, and the whole world doesn't understand. Oh, Don't okay. mind the people that keep walking in front of us. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a theatre, for those who don't know. It's pretty, pretty famous. <laughs> oh, I just squashed a fly. Oh dear. <laughs> <coughs> this it was on the Bhagavatam that they were reading. Yeah. Okay, so we're here to read the... Most famous literature. Yeah, that's right. Grant to Raj Shreemad Bhagavatam. We're reading from where? Canto 3, Chapter 7, Text 15. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Right, Text 15. The Dira said, O oh, powerful sage, my lord, all my doubts about the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the living entities have now been removed by your convincing words. My mind is now perfectly entered into them, entering into them. Papa, the science of Krishna or the science of God and the living entities is so subtle that even a personality like Vidura has to consult persons like the sage Maitreya. Doubts about the eternal relationship of the Lord and the living entity are created by mental speculators in different ways, but the conclusive fact is that the relationship of God and the living entity is one of the predominator and the predominated. The Lord is the eternal predominator and the living entities are eternally predominated. Real knowledge of this relationship entails reviving the lost consciousness to this standard. And the process for such revival is devotional service to the Lord. By clearly understanding from authorities like the sage Maitreya, one can become situated in real knowledge and the disturbed mind can thus be fixed on the progressive path. Hmm. Any thoughts or reflections? Mm, so it's, it's interesting, it's like when you go through like troubles or confusion or the Anyway, my personal experience is the first thing you do is don't consult, say, devotees, senior authorities, the, sh the sastras or spiritual master or anything. We tend to, we get really mental and tend to try and sort it out within the mind. And so it's interesting that he's now convinced, you know, he's entered into him, he's entered into his mind, he's feeling, you help me, you know, because I went to the right source. Mm and so you sorted it out, you know. Oh, very nice. Yeah. yeah. Then one, Prabhupada says, by clearly understanding from authorities, one can become situated in real knowledge and the disturbed mind, which we all suffer from, right? Disturbed minds, can thus be fixed on the progressive path. But you have to hear from authorities what that path is. We can try to concoct something or make something up, but ultimately that's not going to satisfy. If we're sick, we have to go and see a real doctor, not just ask all our friends what their remedies are or ask our own mind. We have to go to an authority. So, like that. Nice point. Next one? Yeah. Text 16. <coughs> oh, learned sage, your explanations are very good, as they should be. Disturbances to the conditioned soul have no other basis than the movement of the external energy of the Lord. Disturbances to the conditioned soul have no other basis than the movement of the external energy of the Lord. So disturbances uh, to the mind, uh, to the body, are simply the movements of the external energy of the Lord. Just like now as we're reading, uh, lots of people are starting to walk, although we try to come early. <laughs> so that, that can be a disturbance. But it's simply the movement of the external energy. So, purport. The living entity's unlawful desire to become one with the Lord in every respect is the root cause of the entire material manifestation. Wow. For otherwise the Lord has no need to create such a manifestation. Even for his pastimes, 
the conditioned soul under the spell of the external energy of the Lord falsely suffers many unfortunate incidents in material life. The Lord is the predominator of the external energy, Maya, whereas the living entity is predominated by the same Maya <coughs> under the material condition. The false attempt of the living entity to occupy the predominating post of the Lord is the cause of his material bondage, and the conditioned soul's attempt to become one with the Lord is the last snare of Maya. So here we he hear, we are hearing again, that idea of the last snare of Maya, and this desire of the living entity. Now here Prabhupada says something interesting, that the material world is created by the Lord because of this desire within the living entity to actually um, become uh, one with him, to enjoy like him, in a sense. So therefore, uh, as we heard in other places, the Lord creates the material world, which is like a prison house, to put people who want to try to uh, enjoy separately uh, from him. So like that. Any mm. thoughts? Yes, true. Okay, so 17. <laughs> are you okay? You with us, Bob? Are you a little too distracted by the Lord's It's very energy? distracting, but I'm going to focus. <laughs> it's very distracting. <laughs> Text 17. Both the lowest of fools and he who is transcendental to all intelligence enjoy happiness, whereas persons between them suffer the material pangs. Okay, so what does that say? Both the lowest of fools... So that's complete mudhas. And he who is transcendental to all enjoying to all intelligence. intelligence. Oh, hold on. So, so he who is transcendental to all intelligence. That means one. You have one who's on the mudha platform, and then one who's actually trans on the transcendental platform. Yeah. Both of them do enjoy what? Enjoy happiness. Both of them are enjoying some ha some levels of happiness. <laughs> because. Yeah, I guess if you're a fool, you're a bit of a dimwit. Well, there's the famous saying that um, ignorance is bliss. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then? So, what, so whereas persons between them suffer the material pangs okay. between those two. Um, that's right. So in between transcendence and just complete dimwit. Tamagoon mode of ignorance. There's the thinkers. There are those who are... Yeah, more or less in the mode of passion. Yeah, I don't mean thinkers in a necessarily intelligent way because it's the, at the other end of the spectrum, the transcendentalist who's a real thinker, but the one, well, I guess the one that we just read, like to be, um, trying to be the pre predominator. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. The ones that are trying to one control who, the do. material they energy. They have some intelligence, they're acting in passion <laughs> using their intelligence to try to enjoy their yeah. suffering. Yeah. Those who are in complete ignorance, they're just happy <laughs> ignorance is bliss excuse me and those who have transcended they're also happy so like that mm, interesting point mm -hmm. oh, pot. the lowest of fools do not understand material miseries they pass their lives merrily and <laughs> doggy just sneezed Carry on. <laughs> the lowest of fools do not understand material miseries they pass their lives merrily and do not inquire into the miseries of life. As we you know, said, such persons are almost on the level of the animals, mm -hmm. who, although in the eyes of superiors, are always in miserable life, are unaware of material distresses. Mm -hmm. A hog's life is degraded in its standard of happiness, which entails living in a filthy place, enjoy engaging in sex and drumming at every opportune moment, and laboring hard in a struggle for existence, but this is unknown to the hog. Similarly, human beings who are unaware of the miseries of material existence and are happy in sex life and hard labor are the lowest of fools. Hmm. Yet, yeah, because they have no sense of miseries, they supposedly enjoy so-called happiness. The other class of men, those who are liberated and are situated in the transcendental position above intelligence, are really happy and are called Paramahamsas. But persons who are neither like the hogs and dogs nor on the level of the Paramahamsas feel the material pangs and for them inquiry about the supreme truth 
is necessary. Mm. The Vedanta Sutra states, Atato Brahma Jijnasa. Now one should inquire about Brahman. This inquiry is necessary for those who are between the Paramahamsas and the fools who have forgotten the question of self realization in the midst of life in sense gratification. Mm. So it just explains that point that we're explaining that, yeah, the ones in the middle who, have, who are not transcendentalists and who are not ignorant in their bliss. Yeah, this Everyone state, else, basically. The statement by Prabhupada. But persons who are neither like hogs or dogs, nor on the level of Paramahamsas feel the material pangs, and for them inquiry about the supreme truth is necessary. So I guess for Paramahamsas, they've already inquired and found the truth, so they're living inside of it. For the hogs and dogs, or those functioning on the animal platform, they're not actually even probably capable in one sense of really trying to understand. So everyone in between, they're, and they're the maximum numbers of people, they're, they're in need of being given this knowledge and wisdom so that they can actually get free from the material pangs. Not by degrading back into hog species, but by being elevated to the Paramahamsa species. Like that. Next one. 18. But, my sir, I am obliged to you because now I can understand that this material manifestation is without substance, although it appears real. <laughs> I am confident that by serving your feet it will be possible for me to give up the false idea. So now the statement by Vidura to Maitreya is that okay now I'm understanding from you that actually although I think this world is real that it doesn't have any substance it's not the reality and I'm certain that by offering service to you then I will be able to come to the point of truly understanding that and give up the false false conception like that purport the sufferings of the conditioned soul are superficial and have no intrinsic value like the cutting off of one's head in a dream. So we're back to that analogy. Yet although this statement is theoretically very true, it is very difficult for the common man or the neophyte on the transcendental path to realize practically. However, by serving the feet of great transcendentalists like Maitreya Muni and by constantly associating with them, one is enabled to give up the false idea that the soul suffers from material pangs. So, yeah, so actually the truth is that the soul isn't suffering. Why? Because the soul is eternal, situated on the absolute platform. So the soul is not touched by anything that's going on here, even though we may feel like we're suffering so bad and so many things are happening and poor me, poor me, and this and that. But actually the soul is situated in transcendence. It's just that our conscious mind has not entered into that level of transcendence. Any thoughts? You want to read the next one? Mm, next. Okay. Text 19. Mm -hmm. By serving the feet of the spiritual master, one is enabled to develop transcendental ecstasy in the service of the personage of Godhead, who is the unchangeable enemy of the Madhu demon and whose service vanquishes one's material distresses. Mm. Pop up. The association with bona fide spiritual master like the sage Maitreya can be of absolute help in achieving transcendental attachment for the direct service of the Lord. The Lord is the enemy of the Madhu demon, or in other words, he is the enemy of the sufferings of his pure devotees. The word Rati Rasa is significant in this verse. Service to the Lord is rendered in different transcendental mellows, relationships, mm. mutual, active, friendly, parental and nuptial. And what? Nuptial. Yours says nuptial. Mm, what's your side? Conjugal. Uh, a living entity in the liberated position of transcendental service of the Lord becomes attracted to one of the above mentioned mellows. And when one is engaged in transcendental loving service to the Lord, one's service attachment in the material world is automatically vanquished. As stated in Bhagavad Gita 2.59, Raso Vajan Rasopi Asya Param Drispa Nirvatite. So it's not that the relationship is stale. I'm the Lord and you are the, you know, servant. It's, it's full of um, 
variety, it's variegated. And whatever, you know, because like some people see as he's my little child, some people think, oh, he's my friend. Some people want to protect, have like more intimate relationship. Hmm. Yeah, so it's dynamic and it is clearly relationship. So mm. this idea of relationships and transcendental mellows um, are 12 in number, seven uh, secondary and five primary, of which of the five primary, uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't really accept the initial one, which is Shantaras, mm. um, because it's generally focused on the impersonal aspect of the board, and it is, um, neutral. It's a, a, a relationship of neutrality. Uh, in one place Srila Prabhupada describes that the, the trees and the grass and the flowers and the rivers, they have a neutral relationship with Krishna, but it's still a relationship. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he puts focus on dasya as the beginning of uh, acting in the relationship because there's service. And in that mood, one serves uh, the Supreme Lord. So like you said, you have those who are, have on reverence and focus on service. Then you have fraternal, which is the friendly relationships, right? Uh, the cowherd boys. Uh, then you have the paternal um, relationship, and that's like Mother Yashoda and the aunties and uncles, <laughs> like that, and Nanda Maharaj. And then you have the conjugal or nuptial. Um, so you can have the queens of Dwarka or you can have the gopis of Vrindavan. And that's a, that's a conjugal relationship. Anyway, there's a lot that can be said, but we'll continue. What's the time? Yes, we've got maybe about three more minutes, enough time, I think, to read one more. Okay. It's okay? Yeah. All right. If everyone's not too distracted. Uh, very sunny as well. It is cooking like anything. Loving it. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> 720. Persons whose austerity is meager can hardly obtain the service of the pure devotees who are progressing on the path back to the kingdom of Godhead, the Vaikuntas. Pure devotees engage 100% in glorifying the Supreme Lord, who is the Lord of the demigods and the controller of all living entities. So. If you're, if, if you're not willing to be austere and, and go through some sacrifice or some uh, penance, then uh, you're probably not going to get uh, much service from the uh, pure devotees uh, because they're fully dedicated 100% in glorifying the Lord and being engaged in, in service. Purport. The path of liberation as recommended by all authorities is to serve the Mahatma, transcendentalists. As far as Bhagavad Gita is concerned, the Mahatmas are the pure devotees who are on the path to Vaikuntha, the kingdom of God, and who always chant and hear the glories of the Lord rather than talk of dry, profitless philosophy. This system of association has been recommended since time immemorial. But in this age of quarrel and hypocrisy, it is especially recommended by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Even if one has no assets of favorable austerity, if he nevertheless takes shelter of the Mahatmas who are engaged in chanting and hearing the glories of the Lord, he is sure to make progress on the path home back to Godhead. So we have to take shelter of the uh, pure devotees, of those who are dedicating their lives to the service of the Lord, and mm. then we can make progress. Tadbidi prani patena pari prashnaena seveya upadek shanti te gyanam gyanena stakta darshanaha. For if you want to know the truth, then you have to approach a, a spiritual master and uh, inquire yeah. from him submissively and render service. And they can, they, can, uh, they can teach you, they can show you the truth. Why? Because tatva darshanaha, they have seen the truth. So therefore they can share it with you. Any thoughts? Closing thoughts? Yeah, I was thinking don't bother approaching the spiritual master if you're not prepared to accept what they hear. What would they say? What they say? <laughs> well, yeah. 
<laughs> you have to accept what they heard. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes you see that the instructions don't, like, yeah, they're not what you you want or would like or have a romantic idea of how it should be. Sometimes you're like, whoa, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember I met uh, met one girl on on the street on book distribution once, and uh, she was kind of a you know a spiritualist, and she and and I was telling her you know showing her Bhagavad Gita and how we have to surrender to a guru. She said she was searching for a guru. She had found the guru, and then you know, and I said, yeah, 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 it's like this. And she said, no, you know, the the guru, the spiritual master, he just says yes to whatever you whatever you want. He just gives <laughs> blessings and says, yes, yes, yes. Go forward and do that. And I said, oh, seems we have a different understanding of surrender to the spiritual master. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, sure. thank you all very much. Hare Krishna, please read Srimad Bhagavatam. If you're interested in getting a set of Srimad Bhagavatams, our Bhadra campaign is in full swing now. And uh, we have about 100 sets that we'd like to distribute. So if you'd like one, please get in touch with us. And or if you'd like to gift one to a friend or family member or work colleague, then you can uh, please get in touch with us and we'll sort it out for you. Yes. Grantubarad Shima Bhagavatam Kijai. Jai. Honey,